All right, so now we're going to move to the basics of SPED Forms 2.0. So if you were here just to hear the updates, we love having you here. Um, if you're here to hear some basics of SPED Forms 2.0, and this obviously is not going to be in depth, just a reminder, if you go to spedforms.com, you go to support, you will see, um, you can go our Thursdays in three slide decks and there's lots of training there. You can go to our YouTube tutorials and there's lots of training there regarding 2.0. But so we're gonna do some, just some basics of SpedForms 2.0 now. Um, one of the things that will look different if you haven't already seen this, uh, and this is both 1.0 uh, and 2.0. This is what that login page looks like and your name will be there. We are um, on, we often use the SPED form as Minnesota demo server, but if you're from Elk River, it's going to say that. Or if you're from Southwest West Central, it's going to say that. This just helps you know where you are. And an important note, just like in 1.0, if you're using 2.0 for the first time, don't log into two different browser windows or two different devices at the same time. SPED forms won't know where you where you are. They won't know where to save your stuff and things could get lost. You can use your laptop at school and your desktop at home and your iPad when you're at a home visit. All of those things are fine. You just can't use them all at the same time. And another reminder, SPED forms has lots of ways to make the system work individually for each district. Districts get to make a lot of decisions based on their needs and the preferences that they set in SPED forms. So make sure that you're following the guidance provided by your district. You, sometimes I'm going to show you things that may not be turned on in your district because they have cho chosen to turn or to not chose. They have chosen to not have them available. All right, so here we go with the basics. We're going to talk about the hamburger menu. We're going to talk about the dashboard, some forms menu, and some forms basics. Like I said, this is we're this is high level. We're not digging deep here. If you want more deep in, uh, information, go to our spedforms.com and go to support. So when we talk about the hamburger menu, and you can see that spedforms, we have a lot of. Um, things where we refer to food. We have breadcrumbs and hamburgers and kebabs, but this is the hamburger. It's up here in the top left corner of your screen. And if this is you're using 2.0 for the first time, this hamburger is really important. This hamburger gives you all of the places that you can move. It takes you to your SPED dashboard. If you're using the MA dashboard, it takes you there. Um, if if your district is using the 504 dashboard and you have those students, it takes you there. All of that is available. But the reason we have the hamburger menu is because if you indeed are going out to a home visit and you're taking a small handheld device, you don't have a lot of room on that screen. And so this hamburger will close. It gives you the symbols, and if you hover over it, it will tell you where you're leave, where you're headed to. But it will remove some of that space that's used up that you that you have available when you're using a bigger desktop. If you always want that hamburger menu to remain open, you go to your settings, and you can go to you can click this and keep that hamburger menu open. The closed hamburger menu, as I said, if you hover over the icon, it's going to tell you what is the what is the dashboard icon, what it means. Like in this case, it would be educator setup, and that's where you would go to find your profile to click and keep the hamburger menu open at all the time. All right, some uh, more basics. If you're logging out, and we do encourage you to log out when you're finished working with SPED forms, it's play nice in the sandbox and protect your data. When you're logging out in 1.0, you knew that it, there was a quit button right up here in the upper right-hand corner. If you're logging out in 2.0, there's a blue person icon in the same area, but you just click on that and click down to sign out. This is where you log out of both 1.0 and 2.0. 
If you're navigating to your dashboard, in the old days under 1.0, right, you go to educator students and that takes you to your dashboard. In 2.0, you go under that hamburger menu and you click on whichever dashboard you uh, want. Now, your district may not use RTI or MTSS. They may not use the health. They might not use 504. So you're only going to see here what is available and purchased by your district. So if you were hoping to see health forms there and it's not, it just means your district hasn't purchased those. All right, when you're navigating from one form to another, there's a number of ways to do that. And so if you're just switching to 2.0, yes, it takes a minute, right? You've got to develop some muscle memory. You've been using 1.0 for a long time probably. You don't even have to think about it. Your hand knows go where to click. That will happen. I promise it will. It will happen with 2.0. It just takes, it takes a minute. And so one of the ways you can move from form to form is with our breadcrumbs. Again, food, food analogies. So I was on Johnny Appleseed. Then I clicked to the SPED forms. I wasn't going to work in MA forms. Um, I, I'm going to work in SPED forms. Then I go to the prior written notice, parental consent, and objection form. If I want to go back to SPED forms, I just click back on SPED forms, and that will take me back to the big list of forms. So we follow the breadcrumbs to navigate within the forms menu for a single student. Another thing that you can do if you're navigating from form to form, here was our breadcrumbs, right? Maybe you want to just go over here and click back on SPED forms. We can see that I was in Thick S. Bacon. That's the name of this kid. Here's where I was. It, re it reminds me of what the name is. And I, can, I was in the notice of team meeting, but I can go back to SPED forms by clicking here. If I want to find a form and I'm not sure where it's located, I can type in the name of the form up here. And that will allow me to click on the form then and move in, move right to it. So here's one way to navigate. Here's a second way to navigate. Here's a third way to navigate. Whatever works for you, whatever you train your muscle memory to remember. We had the switch student button available in 1.0. We also have the switch student button available in 2.0. It does exactly the same thing. But here's where you're going to find it. Right up here, it's the back and forward green arrow. It allows you to move efficiently from one kid on the from one kid to another for the same location. It works just like 1.0 worked. So I type in the name of the kid, and I if I want to switch students, I type in the name of the kid, and I find the kid that I want, and I can save and go to that student. So if I was doing progress notes and I worked in Johnny Appleseed and now I want to go to funny fake student and then I want to go to Sally Smith, I can do that. Just go from one progress report to the next progress report to the next progress report for different kids or team meeting notices. Maybe it's that time of year we're going to write some, you're going to have some team meetings. You can send all of those as quickly and efficiently as possible. SPED Forms now has not yet converted all of our pages to 2.0. So even if you switch to 2.0 and you land on a page, you think, whoa, that one looks like 1.0. Did I, did I go back? Don't worry about it. It works seamlessly between the two. As things are changed over, you will see all of the forms changed over to 2.0. We're not there yet. It's taking lots of time for our programmers to build this. So just know that you will be navigating within the system 2.0. It might take you to something that looks like 1.0, but you're fine. It'll You're still going to navigate right back into 2.0. All right, we're going to talk about the dashboard because your dashboard looks different. So when to get to the dashboard, right in 1.0, you clicked on educator students. To get to your dashboard here, you go under that hamburger menu and click on the SPED dashboard. 
Now, there's all kinds of things available in this dashboard, just like there was before. So if you click under this little blue person icon, you can go to your educator setup. You can get some messages and you'll see I've got the little number three right here in red. That tells me I have three messages. It also tells you which, which districts use SPED forms. It would be easier to tell you not which districts don't, um, but the, it's all listed here. If you're picking up a student, a student has been sent to you by another case manager, you're going to find it under this blue button. Or if you're signing out, like I said earlier, if you're, if you're quitting for the end of the day or the end of the work period, this is where you do it, under that little blue person icon. You can sort this, your list. You've got, you know, however many students are on your dashboard, you can sort this by the drop down. So just you click on it and you can sort by name, you can sort by school, you can sort by grade, you can sort by birthday. And you can also do that by just clicking up here on the bolded words. So if you click, if you want to know by birth date, click. Click on birth date and it will switch up for you. White rows, you have access to the student's file. Shaded rows, you are the case manager or the plan manager. All right. Sometimes you see a little I, that means the student is inactive. Right over here under the gear. If your district uses some symbols, sometimes some districts use this symbol or this symbol. Not all districts do. Like I said earlier, that we've made lots of uh, choices for your districts. So if you see symbols, you're going to want to know what they stand for. All right, over here, we know you're sad. The green smiley faces went away. But the reason was, People that have visual difficulties had a very hard time distinguishing between green, red, and orange smiley faces. So now we still have green, red, and orange, but we have them in different symbols. And that makes it easier for people with visual difficulties. And of course, just like before, the orange is something's coming up in the next 90 days. Green is everything for your timelines is in compliance. And red, something is overdue. If you click on that icon, whether it be the orange one, the green one, or the red one, you're going to get a box that opens up. And so if I had something that was in green, it's going to open up and it's going to tell me it's satisfactory. but all of these boxes, whether they were satisfactory or not, whether they were green, red, or orange, are, they're going to give you the case manager. They're going to tell you the primary disability. They're going to tell you the child's age in years and months. It's going to tell you when that next eval is due. It's going to tell you when the next meeting is due. And if there are issues, if there are concerns, it's going to tell you something in there. And if your district uses the notice of agreement that a three-year reevaluation is not needed, it will tell you when that was sent. All right. So you're going to get lots of information if you click back on one of these icons. If you want to search for a student, maybe you have 37 kids on your caseload, you're a speech clinician, right? And you want to find that student, just start by typing up in the search button. You're going to see a search box on lots of pages. Super helpful tool, one that you're going to use probably often. And then we... Diane, can I say something super quick about the search box? Yes. I, I would like, first of all, I would like to say that it's one of my favorite features of version two um, and has been ever since forever. Um, but it will search for, essentially, it'll find stuff appropriate to that page. So when you're on your special ed dashboard, if you start typing the name of a form, it's not going to 
come up with names of, it's not going to come up with forms. It's going to come up with students for you. If you go to Skylar A. Wolscarf's forms menu and you start typing the name of a form, then it'll just, it'll start showing you names of forms that match your the words, the letters that you're typing in. If you go to a student's history, same deal. It's not going to, this is not where you would switch students. It's not always going to show you student names. If you're, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Oh, that okay, cool. Thank you, Andrea. Andrea is yeah, one of our support request staff persons, and she's the voice of reason many, many times. <laughs> All right. The other thing that you're going to find on your dashboard is these little chevrons out here, and these are quick links. And remember we said before we had IEP services, now we're going to have IEP services one and two. Um, and so that's where this is going to show up. This will take you, I'm in mini A student, and I want to go to her evaluation report. All I have to do is open up the Chevron here, and I go, and I can click on her evaluation report, and I go straight there. Under the hamburger menu, along the left-hand side, there are filters, and you've used filters before, but remember, Filters can really be your friend. They really allow you to refine your dashboard and show only those kids that you really want to work on. Maybe you want to look for only students you plan manage or only MA eligible kids, or you, maybe you want to hide inactive kids. All of those are choices. But here's the full part. Filters are sometimes your full. So over before Christmas, you were searching and you you are a speech clinician or you know, you're an OT and you serve a number of different schools. And so you would, but you were going to only work on Jefferson Elementary. So you ch chose Jefferson Elementary and you were working and it was great and you logged out and then you went home for a lovely holiday break and you did not think about SPED forms or school for 14 days. It was great. And then you come back. And then you open up SPED forms and then you look at your dashboard and you think, I'm missing part of my kids. And then Andrea or Tanya or somebody gets one of those panicked phone calls saying, you lost my kids. Trust us. We didn't, we've never lost your kids. We don't lose your kids. It's a filter. Go check your filters. And this happens every year, every year over summer, every year over extended breaks. No need to worry about it. It happens, but check those filters. All right, plan managers and users with admin rights can grant other people access to student files. So to do that, you navigate to your dashboard, you click on the name of the student whose file you wanna share. In this case, we've chosen John Snow. Then you see that John Snow's name pops up here. And then you can go to sharing and transfer. When the form opens, the options under the hamburger menu change, right? So once you've selected sharing and transfer, then you go ahead and follow these steps. You look under this list for somebody that you want. Maybe John is now going to start receiving speech services and you want to add the speech clinician over here. So you find that person's name, you click on it, and it's going to pop up over here. And so in this case, I'm working with John Snow. The plan manager is Mint Condition. Um, but there are three other people, two people, one person from the outside, two people uh, from the inside, and they all have edit access. So if you want to share with the speech clinician, you find that person, put her over here or him over here and you give them edit access if you want them to be able to work on any of the forms for that child. Now, maybe over Christmas break um, or holiday break, maybe somebody left, the, maybe somebody retired and they've left and now you, they, you no longer want them on this student's list. You can go ahead and unshare them and they will go right back over here and you can add in the new person. All right. When the list of users opens, you just select that person that you want to give access to and you click share. All right, 
Now, once you're in this, this looks old, right? This looks like 1.0. So that means you need to get, you want to get back to your dashboard. I told you, you don't need to worry about this. It's all working smoothly be, between each other. First, uh, version one and version two. Just go ahead and go down to your special ed dashboard, and it's going to take you back to version two dashboard. So what about if you know that you're now going to be serving a student and nobody shared that kid with you? You want to request that a student be shared with you? So you go ahead, you go to your hamburger menu, and you go find and request student. Once you do that, you put in the you put in the name of the kid that you want, anything you know. If you know the first name, last name, maybe you happen to know the Mars number, and you hit search. Then any students who match your criteria instantly appear below. And then let's say I was looking for Betty Crocker, and I want Betty Crocker to be shared with me. I click request and automatically a message goes to Betty Crocker's case manager. In this case, it happens to be me. And remember when I was in the dashboard and there was that little blue icon and I told you there was a green, a little message popped up there, a new number popped up there and it's just telling me, oh, there's a message and I can see who's requesting access to Betty Crocker. And because I'm the case manager, I can give that person access or not. That little number comes up right here. When you want to see what that message is, you just click on the word messages. And then if indeed you want to um, pick up a kid, there would be that. Or if you want to send a kid somewhere, there would be that. And any messages that are done, then delete them. You don't want to have 45 messages by the end of the school year. Just delete them once they're once you've taken care of the activity that's being requested. All right. What about if you want to transfer to a new case manager or a new plan manager? You again go to the hamburger menu, go back to sharing and transfer. Make sure if you're the case manager that you finalized all forms before you're sharing that kid, right? Make sure you do that. So finalize all forms, then go to sharing and transfer under the hamburger menu, and then send this student to a new plan manager. Now this could be somebody within your building, or this could be somebody within a, a different district that uses SPED forms. So you click on send this student to a new plan manager, you, when the transfer window open, opens up, type the first or last name of the person you wish to transfer the student record to and click Submit. So I want to send April updated to a new plan manager. So I need to find that new plan manager. Once I find that person, I can send that student's records to that new plan manager, whether it be in the building as I said, or within one of the hundreds of school districts in Minnesota that use SPED forms. All right. I know there's a lot of information here. We're gonna, we've got a few more slides to go and then we will answer some questions. So we're gonna talk about the forms menu. To work on a student's file, you just click on the student's name within SPED forms. So I want to work on testing a student. I click on testing a student. I want to work on uh, March edition. These are our fake names. I just click on the student's name. Once I open up a student, then I'm going to see file folders. And just like before, think of those as forms or as drawers in a filing cabinet that have folders and each folder contains things that are relevant to the title. So what are we going to find under referral and evaluation folder, right? Referral and evaluation forms. Under service plan, we're going to find IEP and related forms, et cetera. So let's say I open up the service plan. I've got the notice of team meeting. I've got all of those same forms that we had before that were in the big box. And they're also highlighted. The same ones are highlighted that were highlighted before. 
the same ones are translated that were translated before. So it's not different. It just is on a page instead of in a box, if you will. Drop downs are still there if your district has used them in the past. Um, the drop downs you will find will be the little triangle along the side here. This happens to be a question from our prior written notice, right? And so if your district, this is an if, if your district allows you to use uh, drop downs, this is how you're going to get to them by opening the little triangle. Sometimes you see the little triangle over here on the left. So sometimes it's over on the right. It doesn't matter. It's still going to work. Just find the triangle and click it, and then it will open it again if your district has those turned on. If you're doing a text box and you want to have a bigger text box to type in, grab the little corners and pull them down. It just opens it all up and you get to see the entire field while you're working on a form. Quick tip, if you click the enter key, right, you're typing and you click enter, that is an automatic double space. If you click shift enter, that's an automatic single space. And it's the same in 1.0, it's been the same this way the whole time, nothing changed. All right working with IEPs and other forms. So again, when you open up a kid's name, you're gonna see all of these forms. Open up the file folder. Some people have these all these file folders open all the time. That to me makes me, that's it just, it makes me crazy. So you all get to do it whatever way you want. You have the forms open, the file folders open or the file folders closed. But let's way, say we're gonna work on that IEP. Um, again, this is just a reminder, follow district guidance. But if you are going to amend an IEP, and not all districts do it, not all districts amend IEPs. And so district guidance here, that's what we're looking at. Go to the IEP, click amendment, then you go to the student information form, you add the date of the IEP amendment and save. And then you can go back into that IEP and make any changes that you need You need to. And of course, hit save and validate. I do hope before you're making it, you're amending that IEP that, that that former IEP or that current IEP has been saved, validated, and finalized. All right, when you want to print an IEP, you'll get a box that looks like this. You can select or deselect all. You can uh, click the ones that you want selected. You can hit the word draft on there. All of these things are available under printing an IEP. When you're going to the IEP progress report, of course, you need to make sure that you select the right service plan or the right IEP. So you need to find the one that, and, it, and if it wasn't finalized and validated, you're not going to have the right one in here. So making sure that that IEP, when it's finished, is validated and final, finalized and validated, validated and finalized, um, so that you can pick the right date. All right. So in order to do that, you click on validate first. When you're creating a history for one of the IEP or IFSB, you've, you must first validate the form. When you click validate, your form pages will be checked for required fields and some inconsistencies. It doesn't check what you've written. It just checks that you've put stuff in the boxes. If an issue is found through validation, you, you miss some boxes, it's going to give you the opportunity to fix that. Once those are fixed, you click the finalize button and that's creating that static copy and that's putting it in history. You can't finalize an incomplete form. Once you're in that finalized form, you always of course wanna save. You can save some things as a proposal, something as a final. You can include uh, page numbers. But again, look to your district guidance. Are they allowing you to use 
do they want you to put in proposed or draft IEPs and save them? Or maybe they don't. District guidance. We've got lots of ways or lots of things that you might want to include in history because, as I said earlier, most of the districts in the state of Minnesota, everybody but seven, use SPED forms. And don't you want to receive a complete copy of those child records when they move to your district? So making sure that you've done the same. So if a student moves from Ely to Pipestone, the, the new teacher or the new case manager gets all of the documents. So maybe there are some things you want to put in history. Maybe there's some medical records for a student identified with ADHD or due process forms from somebody that transferred from a Minnesota district from one of those six that don't use SPED forms. Or maybe there's information from an outside agency. Or maybe there's just something from another district um, or from uh, another state, I should say. So you can go to John Snow and then it's going to show up over here and you're going to select history and click. And then there are a number of steps to put things into history. You scan that document, you save it, and you click upload. And then a new window appears. And I'm not going to take you through the rest of the steps, but know that all of the steps for this, it's actually quite simple once you get the rhythm of the steps. We had districts that were changing from an old system to two SPED forms in the last couple of years, and they wanted to change. Uh, they wanted to upload into history the most recent IEP, the most recent prior written, uh, prior written notice, evaluation report, et cetera. And so they were putting them in history, and they they got it down so like and they could do an IEP in less than 30 seconds. So there are steps here to putting a document in history. And you can add more information in there if you wish. So then once you have the, all this stuff in history, maybe you want to see the last evaluation report. Type in evaluation report. So I'm, I'm in Randolph A. Scott Jr. I'm in Randolph's history and I want to see the last evaluation report. Click in that and it will show up for you and you'll be able to open it. If, of course, it was created in SPED forms. Or you can find it as a PDF if it was created in a different district. All right, that's it. I'm going to stop recording.